been waiting for this for a long time. We've been making this podcast happen. You made it. Jacob, nice to meet you, buddy. How you doing? All right, bro. You ready? Oh, yeah, bro. Yes, I got the two-step, dude. I'm supposed to hear for a podcast, bare level. I thought you were going to work. Oh, I could do some work now with a head, dude. You know, we, we kind of wanted you to have you on one because like last year or two years ago, I think when you started, right? Three yeah, years ago? We put, 2020? Yeah, we, we, our brand came out about a year and a half ago. Uh, and then probably making videos probably three years now. Yeah. So on all platforms. So. Yeah. So yeah, I remember seeing you when you're coming out on TikTok about <laughs> two and a half years ago. I was like, who is this crazy guy? But he's <laughs> awesome. It, it's just, I don't know. It, it, you know, it makes it easy. You film your mm-hmm. normal life. If you'd have woke up that morning and been like, all right, I'm going to go viral and do yeah. this and do that. It never would have worked. No. You know, you just go out there and, you know, pretty much me and the wife, we just film what we do. We cook and entertain and have a good time. And that's what people, they want to see the Cajun culture and they want to see a good time and they want to learn a little bit too, you know? I feel like all this positive, I feel like you're spreading positivity through your your videos and like through right now in the news and what's going on in the United States. It's just like, I feel like so much negativity is going on. Like I feel, how, how did you grow up? being positive, that positive to, to spread the word like that. Well, and, and like I just touched on, Cajuns, Kunasses, Cajuns, if you don't know what a Kunas <laughs> is, reach it up. It's a small, small area south of I-10. You're either born in it or you're not, you know. And if somebody says, oh, I don't like to be called that, well, they ain't really one, you know. <laughs> so, you know, growing up, Cajuns, and I'm going to use that word Cajuns for now on, but Cajuns are entertainers. Yeah. And and to bring somebody's smile on their face and now being able to travel and especially when you travel to a new area and you say uh, they never had crawfish before, you get to have that Cajun experience. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. That's what, what it's about. And, it's, and you know, look in the world today, like you're saying, you look on social media, everybody's out there doing their thing and everybody's jumping on them, you know? And that's yeah. one of the things I do is Cook how you like. This is how I do it, mm-hmm. you know, but cook how you like. And then this is how easy it is. And, and you know what it really makes me happy? You see people getting back in the kitchen with their kids. Ha- cooking is fun. Who cares if it's burnt, all right? We, yeah. we all <laughs> pizza. We pizza, but we had fun doing it. Yeah. It's time together with the family. It's an experience. Yeah. And the Cajun culture, it's like, it's the root of everything, and it, it grows out from there. And yeah. I don't care what you're cooking. It could be yeah. hamburger helper. Get together and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, just stay positive with it. And, <laughs> and just brings me back to my childhood, my grandpa and all, and just cooking. And and just and nobody was ragging on nobody. Everybody's having fun, you know. Yeah. So. so so the birth of Stale Cracker, how did, how did, one, how did this all start? And then I feel like in my life and in, in our lives, too, is like we have all these milestones we get to. I might be getting married or that might be – uh, getting your first buck or something like that. Right. And you always have that vision of what, um, just like the milestone, like the exact moment happened. Do you remember the exact moment that you're like, okay, I got to do this? Right. I've had, uh, you know, it all started. I was against the TikTok and the social media. I watched YouTube hunting and fishing on it. And uh, my little girl does uh, competition, dance, and cheer. Hey, <laughs> hey, come on in, buddy. Oh, <laughs> They said somebody else was coming that played baseball. Hey, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, this is Jake Rocco. How you doing, dude? Yeah. So, nice to meet yeah, you. Give, give me a hand, Jake. Oh, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. He's the, most, he's the most southern boy here. Awesome. Where you from? <laughs> Uh, here. Chatt- <laughs> Chattanooga South. Yeah. Right, yeah. Probably McDonald's. McDonald, McDonald right? Tennessee. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, no, so anyway, um, her doing that competition dance and cheer that did a lot on TikTok. Yeah. And then it's like everybody, my wife had to send it to me. I tried to open the app. I'm like, ah, let me get the app. So I start watching it and I'm like, there's people claiming to be Cajun or whatever. And I'm like, well, and I go to their payday from way up north or something. And they, are they just doing something that, I'm not saying not right, but it's just like, mm, I'm about to learn them something. Yeah. And it just happened that I went to my daddy's house and, and, and uh, you know, another family member's house and the shrimp didn't peel. And I've been trying to show. <laughs> I said, you got to I worked on a shrimp boat a couple of summers during high school. And the dude that, that ran the boat for a living, he taught me how to, to ball shrimp that peel. Yeah. And uh, so 
I said, I'm about to come out with a diss video on my own family. You know, it's the first, <laughs> man, I got them old raggedy overalls. I get them, Bye I'm about to learn your shrimp that pill. Man, we made the video and I went to bed, drank a little too much, went to bed. It happened. Well, I woke up the next morning, my wife's like, hey, you seen your video? I'm like, yeah, I made the video. She saw it. Yeah, well, yeah, TikTok. Just all it was TikTok. She said, you seen your video? I'm like, I made the video. She's like, no, it's got like 2 million views overnight. Like, holy shit. I was like, what we gotta do? She's like, go put that shit back on and slam another paddle, let's cook something else. And we did soft shell crab and next thing you know, gumbo. You know, just started cooking what's natural and all of a sudden a month you got a million followers. So, and I was like, man, this is this is crazy. You start reading the comments and you start seeing what people want. And then we, you know, we launched the Cajun two-step, which was mm -hmm. a little, it's a dance, but it's a dance my grandpa used to do when he would season his dish. And then we never looked back since then, you know, onto merchandise, more seasoning, more. We're coming out with a, you know, a dip in sauce. We have a hot sauce, Walmart nationwide. That's what I got to get. I got to get some of that because I'm a hot sauce guy. Yeah. Yeah. I got one coming for you. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the name of it. Not, not You're not going to tell me? I am going to tell what you. What is it? The Rougarou. 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 That's the Just name explain of it. that. Huh? The Rougarou is a it's a swamp creature, <laughs> mythical swamp creature. <laughs> so they, they, there's another name. I got a buddy that uh, there's another name for it in another place in the world. But it's it's a a scary creature that lives in the swamp, and all those Cajuns all go out there at night frogging, and we all looking for the Rougarou, <laughs> and we never find him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people say they've seen him, but I call. What's he supposed to look like? Uh, it's it's a werewolf with a tail. <laughs> Wait, so is Wait. it so is this like a kind of it's like a snipe. You ever heard of snipe? Well, like a beak on a snipe? <laughs> like a snipe you shoot? You know what I'm talking about? You're on a snipe. Like snipe hunting. Yes. No, no. It's not no, a real no, hunting. No, this no. is more of a myth mythical thing. Ooh, somebody took you snipe hunting? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you wouldn't tell nobody, I bet. No. Go, hey, what'd you tell them? Nothing. You wanna go snipe hunting? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think I have a, I think our camp counselors one one year took us out and like for a snipe hunt. We're we're little, I think. This, right, you had the little bag by a hole. Yeah, yeah and so we like, just got the jack o' lanterns over here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's what the deer and jack on. Jack you mean jack o' lanterns? Jack o' lanterns. Jack o' lanterns. What is a jack o' lantern? That's like when you carve a pumpkin. Oh uh, well, yeah. jack I was thinking like a jack o' lantern like that. Yeah, I don't know. Is that you never seen one of those? The, what the rabbit with the horns? Yeah. Oh yeah, we got nutras with horns. <laughs> a nutri rat. We we actually we have otters. Uh, I'd say a little. We we call them not nutrias, but they're uh, what are they called? They're like swamp rats. That's Pretty, a nutri. Yeah, but I, I think it's like a Tennessee thing. Like a muskrat. Muskrat. Oh yeah, they taste the same. <laughs> you eat them, huh? If you smother enough anything down them on your arms, dude, they'll taste good. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get a little hunting real quick. I, I think get it. Uh, even though this is a, we consider this a hunting podcast, but right. it's kind of turning into more of just. We're gonna see who who this person is and what your personality is, and um, I feel like nowadays people kind of view that don't understand hunting, view hunting as or they see people as killers or murderers, right? And, and people like that, and, and they don't really get the reasoning behind it. And I feel like for you, it one, it's a meat thing, and right. then two, it's a challenge thing. I think you enjoy to be outdoors, but. Kind of run me through like how did you grow up in the in the bayou and like just run me through a, a typical day as as a youngin. So I'm gonna touch on this real first and then we'll go back to your question. Is is I'm very fortunate at this time in my life to have have hunted in the swamp with dogs, uh, deer dogs. You know what I'm talking about. And that's how we were born and raised in the swamp. I mean you, I mean you 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 get dropped off in the morning in an airboat on a cypress stump and they'll come pick you up at noon there's no walking there's no the dogs are swimming the deer are swimming uh and then moving up and then then we finally when i was about 15 my dad got a lease in in mississippi and also we walk into the stand in tennis shoes it's like whoa i like this <laughs> and you know and then then now you know being able to hunt a bunch of public land in illinois is is you see the full circle and mm -hmm. and deer hunting is different in each region and I'm not saying up north is easier, but I'm saying it's easier. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. You know, you, you you go hunting up there and the wind's wrong. Here comes the deer. It blows at you. It runs 50 yards and it just goes, the deer smell you down south. They're going to tear trees up getting yep. out there. They ain't now stop running. They're going to run three, <laughs> three parishes over, bro. So yeah. it's just, you know, and then so let's get back to the question. I grew up with my grandpa, with my daddy, hunting the swamp, airboats, running dogs, and... Uh, but it was it was camp life. Yeah, they don't have that no more. There's yeah. not camps with hundred 
150, 200 members where you got there in the morning. My grandpa was the camp cook, helped him cook, loaded up all these dogs, got in the airboat, went out there. It was, man, that's fun. Yeah. That's a day of fun. You know, everybody in town was part of it. And nowadays, you drop one deer dog off, everybody wants to get hollering and screaming. And, <laughs> and, you know, times have changed, and my kids won't. You know, now you got these hunting clubs. It's so expensive. You might have 10 members. Everybody paying five, $6,000 a yeah. member. It's not It's not the same. My kids, sadly, won't be raised in the hunting club, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. I was. And, um, you know, just it just I think the people that, that don't have the advantage that I have starting off in the swamp and moving around. I still hunt in the swamp. I still hunt in Mississippi. I still go up north. It's just, it's just, a I, I appreciate all types of hunting, you know, yeah. from the swamp, from the piney woods up to the, the beautiful Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, so uh, in the North, uh, you, you touched on the point, you know, it's easier in the North. Like what's your favorite, I'd say, what's your favorite like game animal that you could catch clean cook type of thing if it was if, if you were to go anywhere in the united states you know i bucket list is an elk you know uh, i would like to do that elk uh, i don't know man I, I mean i've killed plenty of deer and i can't get enough of it you know i i do a little turkey hunting but i'm not you know some people drive across the world you might we might have to change that i don't know <laughs> i've killed a few turkeys i've been on some great turkey hunts and like after turkey hunting people are like you hook for life i'm like nah i'm good so you 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 you've been like 10 yards from a gobbler oh yeah yeah, yeah i've done it's i feel it's, like it's not some I people just it. don't what, what you like i it? love it it's like one of my favorite yeah, i feel like it's I almost like it rushing. more than deer hunting yeah it's just i like the tracking like yeah. part of it the, like the turkeys yeah yeah Having, having to actually move around. Yeah, and like, I, I like it's like you're spying on them. Yeah. It's fun. I <laughs> it's like not it. like you're actually just waiting, yeah. waiting, them on, waiting on them. It might be that I'm just really impatient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll break a few sticks too, like last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I enjoy turkey hunting, but it's, you know, I like about it is you can go with somebody else and yeah. you could kind of talk. But no, I, you know, the hunting, I guess the catch, cook, and clean would be deer, you know, yeah. always a different, a different state, a different time, a different place. Uh, I'm always looking for that because, you know, I've killed deer in Texas. I killed deer in Alabama. Uh, but there's always, I see, I watch videos of people killing them, you know, in the mountains and stuff. Just, I don't know. I just, that's one of my big things is deer hunting. Yeah. Alligator hunting's fun, but it turns to work quick, yeah. you know. It's more of a job. It's more of a harvest. Get paid for the alligator. Get paid for the hide. Definitely fun doing it. But once you get home, you got some work to do. Yeah, so, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So do you ever get into any duck hunting? Duck yeah. hunting. See, I was born and raised. We did the deer hunting, and then we duck hunted in the afternoon. Morning, we ran dogs, deer dogs, and then in the afternoon, we duck hunted. And uh, my daddy actually trained duck dogs. And uh, it got to the point where I was about 15, 16. I remember me and daddy sitting in the blind with the dogs, and the dog was getting old, and it was cold. Ain't no more birds. Salt water done moved in. Mm -hmm. And we looked at each other. He said, Dad, uh, don't you wish we were deer hunting? I was like, man, I think so, Daddy. I said, I'm wet. I'm cold. I ain't killed but one pool do. You know what a pool do is? No. It's, uh, they call it the uh, black duck. It's the one that stays. <laughs> She's laughing over here. A pool do. Yeah, a pool do. <laughs> but anyway, it's uh, it's not even a duck, really. It's a rail, it's a rail family. It's not even. But anyway, so I was like, man, he, he said, we'll hunt till this dog is done. You know, we got three years left on this dog, and we'll. We'll call it rapping just deer hunting. <laughs> and we never looked back after that. And I killed plenty, plenty of ducks. And saltwater came then, you know, after all the hurricanes and ducks left and the flyway changed. And we changed our tactics and started killing deer. So I know you've said you went hunting with your granddad. And that's something that we've done like our right. whole entire lives. And I have so many memorable stories and times with my granddad. What's like the most memorable like hunting story mm -hmm. you have with uh, your with granddad? With my papa. So we, uh, we, we out there in the swamp. We got our hip boots on and... We get out to where we're going. We're sitting on an old, old cypress stump, and we're sitting out there. And, uh, I, you know, being young, and I was a little fatty back then. My favorite memory is, boy, he had reaching that bag, potting meat and crackers, man. I couldn't <laughs> wait. The favorite thing I wait every day was potting yeah. meat and crackers. And yeah. I was with him one time. He killed a really good buck. He was way in the swamp. And he, I remember him. He was all excited, high five, and he went back to the camp. And he's telling everybody how big it was. And he's like, why you didn't bring it out? And they say, I'll go back, get the head. But I ain't dragging him that far, <laughs> you know. But, uh, yeah, it just, it, you know, the, the camp life, that's what I miss. And, and it's yeah. something that that's, that's not there no more, you yeah. know. So. 
Yeah, we, we used to eat honey buns all the time. Yeah, <laughs> the two glazed shows. on glaze. Oh, glazed. Oh, yeah. That's a little heavy. Call some brownies. Huh? That's a little oh, heavy. There you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> More of a zebra yeah. cake kind of man. Zebra cake? Oh, yeah. Christmas, Christmas cake. Oh. Christmas cake, zebra cakes. Oh, they're all the same. Yeah, they're all the same. Did you know the oatmeal cream pie? Mm-hmm. This is this is a the little Debbie stuff. Yes, little little Debbie story. <laughs> if you got <laughs> if you got all the little Debbies together, right, and they you know they you know they're cutting it and scrapping it, they have like these little chunks of cake. Mm-hmm. Did you know they put all those little Debbies together and make the oatmeal cream pie? Hmm. That's how it's how it's made. Almost like potted meat with chicken. Yeah. So if you got the scraps, you're yeah. you're using it and then, and they're making profit off That's of pretty it. Pretty cool. Yeah. Didn't know that. I still yeah. eat them though. <laughs> hey, yeah. So we were talking in the car about the yard pimp. I don't think has anyone asked you about that. I don't. On a podcast, or um, I think we might have touched it before, but uh, I, I'll tell I, you I, wanna, I want to let everyone know the story. The story. I, I think a story. lot of people ask about it. Uh, so my my grandpa was a county agent, uh, which back twenty years ago is uh, almost like a traveling vet, not as traveling vets, you know. And this he was over the four H, the FFA. And uh, I lived here. My grandpa lived next door. We had a goat path between. You know, I was there every morning. He would get on his front porch, toasted wheat bread, and Black coffee. That's all he had every day. Now, my grandma, she was smoking uh, Marlboros and drinking <laughs> Diet Coke. But anyway, so anyway, we were sitting out there on the porch. And, man, he had chickens and all kind of, you know, we had a small, small animal farm. No no uh, cows or horses. But anyway, so he had, you know, free-ranging chickens. He, yeah. said, I'm by, he said, boy, come here. I'm about to learn you something about life. Said, come on, Papa, what you got? He said, watch. Son, you know, sunrise coming up. He said, these chickens are about to start coming out of all these trees. He said, you know, you know, Big Henry, the, the yeah. one that whips all of them? He said, that ain't the yard pimp. So what you mean? He said, watch. Or oh, the head they come out, boy, Big Henry hit the ground, boy, he's strutting, <laughs> looking good. He said, look over there. That's the yard pimp. He done got on five hens already, and this dude ain't got laid yet. That's the yard <laughs> pimp out there. And it, it was truthful, man. It, he was trying to be all macho for the girls, yeah. and the other one just running around sticking and moving, you know. Yeah. So, so you have yeah. all you have all these, <laughs> yeah, you have all these slogans, uh-huh. you know. It, and then that might be, be a Cajun thing, or right. that might, you know, you might use some Cajun language or, in there um, mixed around with it, right? So when this, you know, I'm talking about brands a lot. Did, did that come before? Stale cracker or was the yard pimp? You're like, this is my, this is my. No, deal. it's it's almost like the cat head biscuit yard yeah. pimp. It's something that we always use, you know, and uh, you know, it's like that's money, dude. Like yeah. everything we do, like that's money. What right? about put that on a cracker? Put Where'd that, that come? So from? I'm gonna tell you about the cracker story. That's where I got the name from. <laughs> is uh, you know. You know, everybody likes to sop stuff up with a biscuit. You ever heard somebody say, boy, I'd sop yeah, that yeah, up yeah. with a biscuit? And they always said, boy, I'd put that on a cracker. Yeah. And it, it, they always, you know, just mess with it. And one day my buddy came over and we um, we, we went to get on a side-by-side, do some ride, and it was stale crackers all in the side-by-side. But that one I had a little bit too much to drink the day before and was riding around eating crackers, <laughs> and I left them out, and they all got soggy. And he was like, well, you ain't nothing but a stale cracker. And I said, all right. And then he call, started calling so me that. Then somebody else heard it, and I, I couldn't get rid of the nickname Stale Cracker. So your nickname has always been Stale Cracker. Uh, it's probably eight, nine years old, you know. Yeah, that's so, crazy. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. So I get on social media like, what I'm gonna be? I'm like, you gotta be a stale cracker. So I stale cracker. Somebody already had it with the C. I'm like, stale cracker with a K. <laughs> I got it. Woo! Not that's, knowing, not, hey, not knowing nothing from zero followers. That was my name. That's I was like, hilarious. Well, maybe I would have named it something else. So I know I had 10 million followers following a stale cracker. That's so funny. As I, I was texting somebody the other day, I was like, you, you know, you're coming. And I was like, was, he goes stale cracker with a C. I said, no, with a K. K. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta get it. Me, it, the K and the C means no different. Just that was was available. You know, yeah, it, it exactly. worked out. You know, so yeah. Well, um, I was gonna talk about this for a second. Uh, so. We've been watching this show, Meg and I, my wife and I, and then this is going to like come from a perspective of, you know, we're all fun and games and we're going to talk about some more emotional stuff. But uh, we've been watching this show called Special Forces and they're in the military. I didn't know this. Mm-hmm. They have to send death notes to their their family and it's saying like, hey, I love you type of thing. Like I'm, this is going to, if I die tomorrow, this is what I'm going to give you. Right. So I want to know like, you're busy as crap right now. Right. I mean, right. you're on the road right now. I mean, you're in Chattanooga right now. Right. What would you say to your family if the, tomorrow was the last day? Oh, I don't know. The water comes, put the natty light on the top shelf. <laughs> Live for another day. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and, and I'm going to reach on this is, is this is, I built something that's a brand that stale crack is not going to be here forever. Yeah. 
Uh, but this guy right here, the Cajun Two Step, I hope is still on the shelf in a hundred years. Yeah. I hope my my kids, grandkids, grandkids Absolutely. say, "Hey, that dude is still here spiritually, but his products are still here physically." You Absolutely. know what I mean? You build a brand, you build something for a lifetime. Yeah. And I think what happens with the social media ride is is I watch it on YouTube, and I, I grew up watching YouTube, and you see people. <laughs> And then never see him again. Yeah. Well, as this is going on, I'm not just coming out with just products. Yeah. I'm coming up, this it's got the tribute to my grandpa. It's got his recipe right there. It tells That's you right. where it came from. It ain't like I said, oh, let's mix this together and make a little, you know, make a dollar off of followers. No, this is, you know, everything I came out with and it's coming out with is tested, proven that it's good. If I'm not gonna eat it, I'm not gonna sell it to you, you know. I'm yeah. not just gonna relabel something just to make a dollar, you know. Yeah. And uh so that's that's what the thing is, is is if I had to leave something to my family, like a note is I won't be here forever, but I'm gonna leave something behind for man. all of y'all. That's, that's it, man. And uh throw me that cookbook right there. I'm gonna show you yeah. some things. All right here. So this is my family recipes. If you flip through it, you can see me and my grandpa, we sitting on that log right there, <laughs> hunting. You know what I'm saying? That's a little, so, little cracker right there. Yeah, huh? those little, little cracker. <laughs> so but, <laughs> but, but if you flip through it, you know, it's got stories i kill that in texas but that's me and my dad my first bow kill i killed my first deer when i was 18 with a bow yeah you know just stuff like that and it's, it's stories and everything i'll tell you you know got my first golf fish with a bow you know it, it just shows that a lot of times on social media you really don't know what's behind is this really real or is this is a big persona you know yeah and some of it is you know but you know getting this cookbook and it just shows it's got it growing up the boucheries, which is the hog roast, the big cowan, which is, you know, my biggest yeah. turtle is 78 pounds, you know. Hopefully we go to Arkansas next week and I crush that, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so it, it, you know, just just having something like this to leave behind, set up a photo album, you know, like, oh, that was that was Papa Joey, whatever. You know, just leave something behind. Yeah. And, I, and I would leave that in a note is, Stale Crack is not here, but we're going we're to carry I, on. I think that's so important that we touched on that because – you know, on social media, people that sit around and they're watching TikTok, you know, swiping, swiping, swiping. Right. And they see this character that is so positive and and they just love and enjoy watching you cook and, and following your cookbook and, and cooking like you do. Right. And they want to, they almost want to be you. People personate you all the time. Awesome. And it's, it doesn't bother me at all with that, doing people doing that. And you can see people that are doing it that are true fans, but you can see people doing it and be like, and I don't blame them. They're like, well, what I've been doing ain't working. What he's doing is working. Let me try to do more of what he does. It, yeah. it is what it is on that. Yeah. But it's, it's it's what you don't see behind the scenes. We were talking about earlier about the messages that we get. And I check my Instagram messages. And between me and Jacob right there, we, we check out Facebook and all that. But how many messages we get? And like, man, I was going to blow my head off last night. But I read your, I watched your You've videos. Oh, all the time. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. You make me laugh. I know, and uh, I love it when they start this. This is when I know I read. You will never see this. That's when I start reading. But last night I had a bad night. I had I lost this. I'm I'm a handicap and whatever. Your videos get me through it. And I said, hey, bro, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Here's my personal number. You want to call? You want to talk? You want to do whatever you want to yeah. do? Hey, dude, there's this there's way more out there than you know. You, you're focused on on the wrong thing right now. You know. Yeah. So and that people don't see that and that's about the positivity that you know even with the military people coming back or, or a lot of military people that are or somewhere away from their families like man you're bringing me back home yeah we can get together and we can laugh and be like well, i want to drink a beer with this dude yeah. you know so that's what it's about that's just part of it and it's it's people don't see that part you know they be like well why you keep doing all that jumping around like a fool i'm like and, and one thing in the videos, I throw a lot of stuff off. Oh, I'll break stuff. <laughs> and so, and and the older people are like, man, you look like a fool doing that. Quit it. But when I go to an event like tomorrow, and that little kid walks up, you know, and say, I love it when you break stuff. <laughs> I love it. When, hey, I'm gonna keep doing it for them kids. At least they can get on there, and the parents come up to me and they're like, you know, your page is the only page I can give them my phone and say, watch their cracker all night. Ain't that much cursing. Ain't no political. Ain't no bullshit. It's funny cooking entertainment. That means a lot to me. And I'm gonna keep my page clean as I can, you know. Yeah. Gotta throw a few little puns in there every oh. now 
in think, it. I think uh, it's a little deep south in there. Yeah, yeah you got to throw a little bit in there. But, and, and that's what keeps me going. And that's when you wake up in the morning and you, you read the message and they're all positive and you're helping people out. You know, I, we went to Florida not long ago in Fort Myers, helped the people after the hurricane. And being able to do stuff like that, you know, before... You know, you're tied up with all kind of stuff going on. And people are like, hey, man, come help and help. And now being able to do this full time and help it is a good thing. How many panels do you think you've broken since you've started making videos? Well, I broke a few. You know, they, they the, the panel sponsorship <laughs> is a good one. They sent me a lot of them. They, <laughs> they, they, they break them. They're, they're going to send you a metal breaking. one. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got some metal ones coming. I ain't going to try to break those. Though. Yeah. <laughs> so back to your grandfather and and. And, and before, you know, and how you grew up and stuff like that. Do you have anything that's kind of like passed down cooking wise? Or do you have anything that's kind of just remember, like your trophy in your house? Like if, if your house is on fire. Right. Like what, like to your heart, like what do you grab it? All my deer heads. Like, <laughs> first off. Yeah. yeah. If my house burns and my deer heads are in it, you know it wasn't an insurance fraud. I promise yeah. you. <laughs> deer head, well, my guns are in the safe, but my deer heads are coming first. Well, I'm going to grab my wife's puppy dogs first because yeah. without those, we'll have to deal with her. What do you, what do you got? What do you mean what puppy I got? Dogs, what? So we got two rat terriers. I got a black German shepherd, and she just bought a, a, a padoodle or whatever them dogs are. Go, them golden dogs? doodle? What? Yeah, something like that. She's German trying, doodle? She's trying to be bougie or whatever. <laughs> but no. Nah, so we got four dogs, and uh, but uh, she loves her dogs. And if I had to run back in there and grab some, I'd grab my grandpa's old Magnolite pot. They don't even make them no more. It's just an old school metal pot. They another company's making them now, which is a good pot. But I'd grab that, grab deer heads, dogs, and run. <laughs> yeah, we so got this. obviously you've gone all over the country right. doing this. Where's yep. been your favorite place to go? <laughs> I, outside, outside after, of after this, tonight, right? it might be here. It might be. It might be. <laughs> after you eat that pie when we get there, you're going you to want to come back. But you wanted to take me to look out mountain earlier. I don't know what you're not going to do. Sunset me. Rock. I don't know what you got going on, bro. No, hey, don't let me get in the truck by him by himself. <laughs> Let's go ride. We no. can go hunt for snipes. No, 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 not me and you. Uh, so I've been to, um, I didn't have to answer the question. Good, good, good. So last year, they put me up in a castle in Pennsylvania, in a winery in a castle. I didn't know it was Hornet. I was knew something was weird. But Noski is the name of the place, winery. He he had an event the next day, and uh, he got me up there, picked up me and my buddy from the airport. And what's cool about it, I'm a, I, I can get along with anybody. So people are like, you're not nervous when you meet these people? I'm like, no, nah, just get in with them. I don't like them. I jump out, do something. You know, they don't, well, I'll make, I'll make it through. Be, my wife's always worried about it. So the dude picks me up. We go pick up the crawfish. Anyway, we go to this, we pull up a castle. I knew it was at a castle. I didn't know we were staying there. And the dude was like, it is the key. I'm like, what you mean? He's like, yeah, there's, there's 62 bedrooms. There's this and that. He's like, there's in the cellar, there's a movie theater, popcorn, whiskey, wine. All right, yeah. He's like, find your room. Just don't stay in this one room because it's, it's hard to make the bed. It's the big thing. I'm like, okay. So I went getting every bed to make, I had to pick the comfortable bed, you know, out of 68 <laughs> rooms. So we're walking around. Dude, it would, it would mess me up. Was There was a, a switch that said light for the pool. So I wanted to find the pool. So I got my buddy walking outside on the phone. I keep hitting this light. You know, like, hey, you sit. No, they ain't sitting. Come on, they seem into the pool. In, so we never found it that night. <laughs> did you already talk about how the Cajun two-step name came around? Yeah, I did. About the grandpa doing the doing his little signature move, you know. And, that, and uh, so when I started my videos, I was, you know, using season, but like hit it with a little two step, little Cajun two step, and it, it hit me. I was like, man, my grandpa had his own season, and, and you know now it's you know back you know the eighties and nineties that you we got so much more uh, you know opportunities and season and his freshness and all that than what he had, and, I, and so I got with my uncles, I got with my dad, I got with my cousins and all. I'm like, man. Let's see what Grandpa was doing, you know. And we we mixed around like this is the closest we can get it, and I think it's better because of the freshness, you know. And we taking lemon and lime and dry liquid and drying it and putting it back in there. And nobody else is doing that, you know. And that's why, hey, you know, that's why it's four, five, six dollars on the shelf, and <laughs> other stuff is a dollar. Exactly. Hey, you buy what you get, you know, and you keep mm -hmm. the sodium down, and you, you you fill it with good good freshness, and that's what we're doing. So. Mm -hmm. I think I would have one question. Mm -hmm. Saying one question. Well, yeah, <laughs> but uh, like he was saying earlier, like and you, uh, we're like really close to our grandfather, like hunting and everything. And I have like a favorite hunting story, like this one time. 
we shot a deer and it like hit its leg and we tracked it for like a mile or two. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if you have like a favorite hunting story with your grandpa. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, so probably back to it, me and my dad and it's it's um we were in St. Francisville hunting and I shot a buck and it rolled all the way down the hill in the creek and uh, we go and get it where we load it up on the four wheeler, you know. And it's dark, and you know the four wheeler's got an old cracked muffler. You know it's old, it's old timber wolf. You know, <laughs> and we go in the creek coming out. We come up a hill and go down, and he moves a limb, and the limb comes back, hits me right there. All right, so I'm trying to be tough. You know, I'm 15 years old, and daddy, daddy can't see you cry. I didn't know my, it was so cold. I didn't know my nose was bleeding. I had blood every like, and I'm just holding on. You know, <laughs> dude, <laughs> we pull up at the camp, and everybody at the camp is looking. You know. And they're like, what? And they're like, yeah, he got him a buck. He's like, did he shoot himself? <laughs> so that was, I was like, yeah, that's not. And I did like that. And it was blood everywhere. Yeah. I had a yeah. similar story. We, It was like one of the first does I shot. We shot my grandfather. He shot a buck. And then he shot a doe. And then I shot a doe. Uh-huh. And when I shot my doe, it was like one of the first does I shot. I was probably like seven or something. And I had my eye right on the scope. It made a bloody purple gotcha. circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What kind of caliber? I don't. I have no idea. Two forty three. No, then two four. You weren't shooting the seven mil. I was. That was. Yeah. I was. But tiny. for a second there, you couldn't hit one unless you got scoped in yeah, the forehead. I, <laughs> yeah. That was. <laughs> so let's let's switch back to duck hunting. I'll tell you my funniest duck hunting story. So I got my dog. Got me and the buddy. We in the blind, and uh, I had to got the old rot gut, you know. Mm-hmm. So I slip out in the back. Do That's my. That's happened a few times. Right, right. And I had the old coveralls on, and it was cold. Go on the back, man. I'm sitting there, and, man. I keep looking. I'm like, I'm look at the dog. You shit right here. You, you had to shit in the blind, you know. Well, I pulled on my sleeve, and it was cold, and I kept wiping it, bro. I was like, man, something smells like shit. Like the sun come up, my buddy's like, you either ate a snicker bar or you shit your face, and I was wiping it on me, man. Dude, I never lived that down. I like, I was like, if you tell anybody this hat, like, sure enough, as soon as we got back to town, he's like, he he pulled on his sleeve and wiped it on his face. We're blaming the poor dog the whole time. The dog's like, I ain't did nothing. Yeah. But that was like one of the times, I was like, man, I was so embarrassed. But oh, it is what it is. It's part of hunting. It happens. Yeah. I don't uh, know if maybe it didn't happen to y'all. Yeah, I got a, I got a similar poop story. The first time I, I ever went hunting was him and my dad. Oh. And, <laughs> And I was like, I was like, I before that I wasn't like too crazy about it. I wanted to stay home with mom. <laughs> I said I wanted to like be there with her, but it was like the first time I gone, and my dad was like, oh, he was like, I gotta go real bad, and so a he was coffee like, drinker, yeah, yeah. And so he was like, he was like, he was like, Sarah, take your shirt off, and so he took my shirt off and went in the field right in front of us, just squatted down, what squeezed one do? out <laughs> right in front of his shirt, and took it right through my shirt. shirt. He brought it back. <laughs> no, oh, good thing. <laughs> His son's a shirt off his body. Oh, yeah. that is terrible. I I would just lose a sock. I'm, I, either sock. That's what I lose. I was, I was doing what he told me. <laughs> just gone through a lot of leaves. Before. Yeah, yeah. I, got I don't out. use leaves. No ever work out. So <laughs> tell, you get red books. Tell him the story about the the papa and the washing his hands with that. Oh, yeah, I got the money. Oh, so um, one time I'd been hunting with our granddad for about two or three days in a row, and we were we had this hunting camp and. You would go and you'd mark what stand you were gonna be in, and you'd pick you'd pick one for the whole weekend, or mm-hmm. you'd mark a couple for the whole weekend. And we picked this one, and we were gonna be hunting there the whole weekend. So we'd leave like a couple water bottles or a backpack or something in there, and you know we'd been peeing like we weren't gonna pee out the door of the box. We'd right. pee in a water bottle to sit on the ground. Sure. And one morning we got in there real early. It was still <laughs> dark, and we'd eaten a honey bun or something. He's like, "Man, my hands are sticky. I'm gonna pour some water on them." And he got to pouring like water on his hands and I was like Papa that smells awful and he he was like oh crap he got and started pouring pee <laughs> all over his hand. hands watching his Y'all hands probably kill feet. a big old buck then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably smelled it yeah. yeah so we were talking about gator hunting and before mm-hmm. and on the way here we're, I was like oh I'm gonna get a gator tag and, oh, and Jacob was saying it's impossible to get gator gator tag yeah what's your process of, of going to hunt gators I mean what you know it's it's a short season and uh us, we you know we getting about ten tags with the with the land on the tags that we get. Some people get two, three hundred tags, and they got to get a crew together, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know we get the tags, and and last year since we overpopulated, they actually are letting people try to get public land tags, which is a good thing, you know. 
And so, you know, it all starts as the day before we prep, you know, get our old rotten chicken, our old rotten yard pimp, mm. and we hang them from trees and go check the lines. And if we get lucky and see a good gator swimming, yeah. we'll throw the, throw the line over and snag it and, uh, you know, try to get him close to the boat. So. Yeah. I was going to ask you, you got all these recipes. Do you have a secret recipe for your gator bait? Like, let it sit out for a couple of days? Or it don't take long for chicken to go funky, bro. Yeah. <laughs> By September, it's still 102 in Louisiana, dude. So it don't take long for the maggots to get there. You got so. any questions? Y'all got any questions? You want to yeah. join? Let's just do natural. Man, why don't you sit next to the stale cracker? Come on over here. <laughs> yeah, Jake, <laughs> zoom, out, zoom out on that. Yeah, on. Yeah. Why don't you ask a question? Yeah, ask a question. Yeah, you see that's a stale cracker. Since you thought my hair was Let's fake. <laughs> it's wild. Look at that. It's Jock Peterson with a mullet. Well, yeah, I died. It would be great if I didn't. I'm old. How old do you think I am? You can say it on camera. How old do you think I am? Well, you know how old my I kids are. I know how old you are. Late 30s? I thought late, I thought late 30s. but 40, I'm 41. But I know, yeah, you're 41. 41. Yeah, it ain't that's too bad. You. It is young, but my dad, my grandpa, they're all white headed, you know, by the time they were my age. So, so that's, you don't color that at all. Oh yeah. No, I, you I, do I, color. I, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> Jacob does it. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should let Jacob do somebody's hair. Yeah. Oh yeah. Eli. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Eli. Yeah. Yeah. Eli's got him hair. cut his hair. We, How about we, we do be... this? <laughs> if we pay <laughs> Jacob, man, we'll, Chad will get him to cut his hair because he's supposed to get a haircut. Yeah. His baseball coach told him he said, man, man you got, well, all you need is a little pair of scissors. That's all he needs. <laughs> yeah. Are you good? You got a call? Yeah. Let's do it. I want to hear about your wife. Yeah. Oh, as a, special individual right there yeah. to put up with the shenanigans I pull on her. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's a good mom, two kids, and, 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 you know, taking time out to, you know, have a one in competition, dance and cheer. That's a full time deal. You know, my little boy going to school and doing all his stuff. Uh, you know, just her, her being a great mom and doing what she does allows me to do this. Without that, there would be no me, you know? Exactly. You know, I would say behind every good man is a good woman, but she's right on the side of me. There's nobody behind exactly. me. So, uh, and, uh, you know, she lets me do this and, and she knows my passion for it, spreading the Cajun community and, uh, you know, can't do it all by yourself. Yeah. yeah so. I feel like sometimes I get on this little trace of hunting too much and, yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. Want to say uh, something about that, Meg? Yeah, you want to say something? <laughs> <laughs> like this year was a little overboard. I was right, going, right. I was going to Oklahoma and right. Kansas and Tennessee. But if you're coming and, back with something, but if you come back with nothing, you well, I used, to, I used to. I used to. I used to. I went by a Chanel purse. I got a purse. Yeah. Yeah. This this year kind of kind of got caught up in it, and I used to not come home with stuff, but in Oklahoma, I got that buck and. I haven't come home with it yet, but they're both going right there. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It just, uh, you know, so I'm going to give you a little secret about my cooking videos. If it's baking, it's her recipe. And she's behind the camera going, boy, that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Like, if you see a baking video, dude, I do plenty. Like, not plenty, but I throw her like a, a cookies or cake. That's her. She's behind it. Like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. But that's, so she helps out. And, uh, you know, we, we expand and, uh, we, we got a store now, but we move into the interstate and she helps run that. And, uh, you know, the, the, the employees we have, and I'm just, you know, it's crazy going three years ago, can't pay your light bill to now traveling and enjoying, you know, it's, uh, I wish it's something that everybody could experience, you know, yeah. in their life. So what's your biggest so like right now we're in the stage of, you know, we're we're not like to that, you know, Mount Everest, the peak right. of, of getting there yet. The point. Where yes, we're at the, the point. We're, we're, point we're on our way. Right, the point. We're on the point. 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 There point. you go. Point. 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 Yeah, <laughs> we're we're on our way up and we can see the top. Right. You don't ever want to get to the top. What happens when you get to the top? You stop. Don't you ever be mind. stagnant. That's my whole goal. It's like some days I don't have to wake up at six in the morning, but I'm going to get up because if I sleep till seven, I feel like you don't got stagnant. You know, it's uh, it's just a drive that you have. And I can tell you that is always keep your eye on the plan. Once you get to the top of it, it's. That's a quote right there. Yeah, yeah. Down here, man. They need to go. You need to get a plan hat. <laughs> right, plan. I can do something with that. Lord, we just love you and we praise you. And we know that you are always at work and you are always good. So awesome, Lord, that my new friend, Mr. Cracker, uh, also believes in providence, and I know that he is here for a reason. I pray, Lord, that he would feel your love and our hospitality toward him. 
I pray that you would continue to bless his crazy, wild um, adventure <laughs> of social media and new careers. And I pray the same thing for Ben and uh, all the things that he has going. I thank you for this family and for our opportunity to welcome someone new. And I pray that you would bless this food to our nourishment. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.